We should be watching some of these other indicators. They do not seem to be suggesting that inflation is baked in the cake, meaning embedded now in the system, never to go away. Uh, that's the great fear, that we're in the a replay of the 70s. The bond market is sending signals, and it's not just our bond markets, bond markets around the world. Uh, sending signals that, whoa, 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 wait, <laughs> you can't do this. So I think they'll probably do 25. We thought the last, uh, the, at the last meeting they might do 50, so one and done. We've been saying two 25 basis point moves. Uh, I'd be surprised to be, see 50, but I, I do uh, see that this Fed, many of the, the Fed members are very afraid that they will uh, walk away with a legacy of letting inflation out of the bag again. So they, they might want to play it tough, but I think the bond market will give them an even more severe uh, warning uh, that, that they're playing with fire. Now, the other thing that's interesting about the bond market is if you look at the two-year bond yield, it has already priced in uh, the expectation that the Fed is going to move another three to four or five times, depending on how many 50 basis point moves are incorporated. Uh, and so this, this uh, should be in the market. And if the bond market is successful in changing the Fed's mind, uh, then uh, we, have, uh, we will have a very bullish environment. And I do believe that is what's going to happen. I don't know when, but I do believe that's what's going to happen. Fiscal policy. Okay, the latest uh, out of this administration is a wealth tax proposal or a proposal to tax unrealized uh, capital gains. Um, this is a, a midterm election year. I didn't think we would see this kind of uh, discussion uh, taken seriously this year, and I don't think it will be taken seriously. Administration is observing with some alarm uh, how, uh, how energy price, prices are crushing the purchasing power of uh, uh, lower income individuals, lower to mid, middle income uh, earners. And uh, it, it, it has released uh, or announced that it is releasing a million barrels per day from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve for the next six months, uh, almost up to the midterm elections, conveniently. Um, we would suggest, and, and we're also seeing signs that the administration is warming up to the idea that for national security purposes alone, uh, we should be ramping our own energy production back up to its peak and beyond and become independent of anyone out there uh, uh, in terms of our energy needs and even to help our allies and our, our partners in the rest of the world, certainly in Europe, overcome uh, their dependence on, on Russia. Uh, so we shall see if, uh, if the administration uh, does move more aggressively in this direction. Uh, it makes sense. Uh, it will create jobs. Uh, if the economy is slowing the way we think it is slowing, uh, the administration will want to create more jobs. Uh, and so uh, hopefully we will see um, a more uh, friendly attitude towards investing in energy for national security. And second, the same thing could be going on with employment that has gone on, we believe, with inventories. We, we believe there's a massive inventory buildup underway right now, uh, and it's because of supply chain problems. So uh, it's probably the result of uh, purchasing managers who ordered way too much for what they're really going to need, thinking they wouldn't get everything. And now I think they're getting everything they wanted, and now much more. Um, what's happening in employment? Uh, we think the same thing could be going on. Uh, there have been a lot of businesses looking uh, for employees for a long time, a lot of help wanted signs out there and so forth. Uh, so there could be a little bit of that, hey, uh, I'm going to get them while I can get them. And if business slows down, so be it. I can't go through ever again what I've just been through. Uh, one of the very good pieces of news in the employment report is the, the prime age uh, labor participation rate went up a lot 
um, it, uh, up to 82.5%, and I think the peak pre-COVID was 83%, so that's really good. Unemployment, you have to go back to the late 60s uh, to see the unemployment rate lower, so it's at 3.6%. Uh, Initial claims have been pointing us in that direction for quite some time. Uh, average hourly earnings were up 0.5%, they're up 5.6% on a year-over-year -year basis. They were up only 0.1% with a revision uh, last month, so there was no real major catch-up. And if you look at uh, the last three months and annualize it, that uh, growth rate, the wage growth rate, uh, slows to 4.5%. And if we're right, productivity gains are going to offset a lot of wage gains moving forward. Maybe not right away, but moving forward. Now, if the unemployment report was that good, why is the consumer in such a funk? In April of 20, it dropped to 72, so that was a swift decline. By April of 21, it was back to 88, and uh, Today, it's down to 59. The low, the lowest point ever, I think, in this index uh, was 55 during the 08-09 crisis. We're almost there. That period of time when people were losing their jobs and losing their homes and losing uh, their autos uh, and uh, you know suffering mightily, um, that's how the consumer's feeling again. And of course, the reason is the hit to purchasing power that uh, inflation uh, represents, not just represents, is. And uh, uh, so we're very focused on retail sales. We're seeing a lot of retailers saying sales are starting to disappoint. Uh, they were up in February, the last metric we have right now, 0.3%. But inflation in February was up 0.8%, which means in real terms, uh, consumption was down 0.5%, so that's down 6% at an annual rate. That is a huge hit to consumption. And if you look at the average since October, it's been pretty flat. The average real consumption has been flat. Uh, and that is why inventories, we believe, are, are picking up. Uh, we've seen a few surveys, including uh, ISI Evercore survey, Retail index had been holding up, holding up, very strong, very strong, and then boom, in March it came down. We, we've seen auto sales, which popped from 12 million units, a very low um, rate in uh, December, to 15. There was a bit of catch up as supply chain issues straightened themselves out a bit. And now those auto sales are dropping again, 14, and it looks like it could be close to 13 million uh, in March.